and there's already some comments in it, and there's already some code in it as well. Um, the order that things are written in the file isn't required, but it's a certain convention. So that's why like number two is up here and number three is here, but we're actually gonna start down here with number one. This is not quite what I expected. Hold on, let me open up the right file. Cool, get it back to the way it was. Um, so we're gonna start down here by number one. There is some code written down here, which um, we'll get to later. It's just tedious for us all to type it in together. So once we do a couple of examples, that's enough. And then the rest is, the rest is there. Here's some context for this class that we're writing. So this class models a mileage tracker for a car. Um, here's the situation. Um, let's pretend we are software engineers working at BMW in Chicago. So BMW has a Chicago office. One of the projects they work on is the BMW mobile app for, for their cars, right? On the mobile app, we can see things about our car, like how many miles have we driven? How much fuel is in the tank? What is our current mileage? How many miles per gallon are we getting? In order for that mobile app to work, there has to be a class from which we can create objects that will keep track of all that stuff for our car. That's what this mileage tracker class is. So our job as a software engineer is to write the mileage tracker class that will keep track of how many miles we drove, how much fuel has been consumed, and be able to calculate the miles per gallon, the mileage. Some other software engineer who's writing the mobile app will create a new mileage tracker object and call these methods as the car is being driven or fuel is added or they need to display on the mobile app like what the current mileage is. So that, that's our role in terms of like the BMW software company. Um, so a couple of things here at the beginning. Um, at the very top, it just describes at a very high level what this class is for. This class models a mileage tracker for a car. I'm going to put my GitHub username here. I'm going to put today's date here just because I like to keep track of that. Um, we're going to skip two and three because we're going to do this in order that I think makes the most sense. We're going to focus first on defining what methods make sense for a mileage tracker class? Here's the good news. Um, well, like good news, bad news. Bad news first. Not bad, just challenging. It is very challenging to do good class design. It's really hard to figure out what concepts go together in a class. What methods should there be? Okay, what attributes should there be? The good news is doing class design is really beyond the scope of this course. So we're going to be pretty much told this whole year what class to write, what methods to write, and what attributes to have. We're going to focus more on like, how do we, how do we define that? What does the syntax look like? How do the algorithms work? So we don't really have to worry so much about the class design stuff. But in general, when we're coming up with methods, we we take the stories we tell about a class or objects of that class, and the verbs in those stories tend to become methods. So if we were to describe how this mileage tracker worked, we'd have stuff like, oh, we're going to like put more gas in the tank, or we're going to drive the car a certain distance, or we're going to get the current mileage. And those verbs turn into methods. So let's write a couple together. Um, but first, there are four things that we always need um, when we're defining a method. So let's add that to this comment right here. All right, define methods by specifying. First, we need to always specify the visibility of the method. What we mean by that is, is it public or like private, for example? So we specify the visibility first. In general, the methods we define in a class are going to be public 
because we want other code to be able to call them. Later in this unit, we'll discuss when might we want a method to be private. But in general, our methods are going to be public. The next identifier we have is the return type. When this method is invoked, what is the type of the value it returns? Okay. Um, if it doesn't return a value, and some methods don't return a value, then it's void. If it does return a value, then it'd be something like double or int, or maybe it returns a chirp, whatever it happens to be. The third thing that we specify is the method name. What is the name of this method? So we're going to write a method in a moment here called increment miles driven, and then we're going to write another method called get miles driven. Okay. But whatever your method name is. And then the final thing that we specify are the parameters and their types. So for example, when we tell the turtle to go forward, we need to specify additional information. How many steps? When we tell the mileage tracker to increment the number of miles driven, we need to specify more information. How many miles? Right? So miles could be a parameter. <laughs> And its type could be double, meaning um, a double is a better fit here than an int, because what if we drive 12 and a half miles, right? We want to be able to capture that half. Cool. So these are the four things we're always going to specify when we're defining a method. So just to be clear and to re reinforce this whole context switching thing, we're not invoking methods on objects right now. We're defining a method for like the very first time. Okay, this is a method definition. We'll worry about, we'll, we'll switch back to invoking methods on objects later. All right, so here's, let's go through each of these. So we're going to do the increment miles driven method. Visibility, public, cool. When we increment the miles driven, no value is returned. So we'll specify void as the return type. The name of the method is increment miles driven. And then parameters go inside of parentheses. If there are no parameters, we still need the parentheses. Um, but if there are parameters, they're going to go inside these parentheses. We specify the type first and then the name of the parameter. This line here should look a little bit familiar because we see that when we read the documentation for methods in the last unit. Right? So when we read the method documentation for turtle or string or rectangle, it looked just like what we just typed together. It looked like what we call the method declaration. Yeah, question. Something else that we're going to do together over the next few days um, is we're going to write this mileage tracker class using a best practice called test driven development. Test driven development means that we actually write the test before we finish writing the so we're not going to actually fill in this method right now. We're going to leave the body of the method in between these curly brackets blank. We're going to declare all of our methods. Then we're going to go write the test and run the test. And it better fail because we haven't written the code yet. And then piece by piece, we'll go back and implement our methods and keep running the test to watch them pass more and more and more and more until all the tests pass. Okay? And that's called test-driven development. So we're going to be doing that together as we, as we go along here. All right. Um, one other thing we're going to do, another best practice, is we're going to write documentation for our methods as we define them. Um, and, and I'm going to show you something super cool at the end of class today related to that. The way we write documentation is with a comment, but it's a special type of comment. We're going to type a slash 
and two asterisks. So slash star star and hit enter. And you'll notice that the color is different. This is a Java doc comment, meaning um, this comment is going to be used to create our Java documentation. All right. So first thing we're going to write in our documentation for this method is one or more sentences that explain what this method does. So this method, let's say it increments the number of miles that the car has driven. Cool. Sometimes we might need more than one sentence. That's fine. But there's at least one sentence. Um, for each parameter we have, we need to document what that parameter really means. And we do that with an at param tag, the name of the parameter, miles. So this name has to match this name here, miles, miles. And then just a brief description of what it, what it means. The additional distance in miles this car has driven. And uh, that's pretty good from a documentation perspective. We're going to stick with that. Let's also, let's write one. So this method here, increment miles, oh, driven. I didn't even spell this right. Increment miles driven. There we go. This is a mutator method. It's going to change the state of our object. Um, let's also write an accessor method, a method that doesn't change the state, but returns a value related to our object. So we're going to specify these same four things as up here. Visibility, public, return type. So let's, let's write a method to get the miles that have been driven. So we need to return a value, which is the number of miles driven. So that's going to be a type double, because we could have driven some fraction of a mile. Method name, get miles driven. We need our parentheses. We don't need to specify any additional information for this accessor method. So we'll just have the parentheses. We'll have our curly brackets. In order to get this to compile, we need to return something. But we don't want to like fully implement this now. So for now, we're just going to say return 0.0. .0. And we'll just leave it at that. We will come back later and implement all of these methods. We're just not going to do so yet. But we are going to document this method. So slash star star again. This is the Java doc part. And we're going to have a you know, one sentence description. What does this thing do? This method returns the total number of miles driven. So back to the story here, where this is used is that other software engineer at BMW working on their mobile app is going to create this mileage tracker object that you're writing and call this get miles driven method so that the mobile app can display, oh, you've driven 47.5 miles. Right. Right. So that's the purpose of this method. Because this method has a return type, because it returns a value, we need to document that as well. And we do that with an at return tag. This is going to be a little bit redundant, but it works out really well in the documentation. We're going to say return the total, total number of miles driven. We'll just leave it like that. So we've declared a mutator method. We've declared the associated accessor method. We've written the documentation for each. And here is like one of my favorite Java features. What we get to do now is go to the tools menu and choose toggle documentation view. 
or just hit Control J on Windows or Command J on the Mac. And what BlueJ is going to do is it's going to automatically run this Javadoc tool, and it's going to generate HTML Java documentation for the class we just wrote. This is, in my opinion, one of the most useful features of Java um, because it makes it so easy for us as software engineers to keep our documentation up to date uh, with the, documenta the documentation up to date with the code. This looks just like the documentation for the turtle class. This looks just like the documentation for string or rectangle. Um, but it's our class instead, which is super cool. So we can actually see all the methods here. Some were provided for us. Um, but for example, here is increment miles driven right here. I can click on it and I can see the little description here. Here's the method declaration that we typed. Here's the documentation we wrote. Here's the parameters and what they mean. Um, it's super cool. And then we can just press Control J or Command J to get back to that again. The reason why this is so useful is often in um, often when software engineers are writing documentation, the moment they publish it, it's out of date because then they go and change the code in some way. What's great about JavaDoc is the documentation is embedded with the code. And so it, it's not like it's automatic, but it's a lot easier when I'm changing the code here to make a slight change to the documentation here as needed. Um, so tools like this, like JavaDoc, have gone a long way to keeping documentation up to date with code. So pretty, pretty cool feature. 